Welcome back to RM World Coins Collection and Investments. Hopefully, uh, you're getting some good information. I've been uh, uploading a lot of good videos and uh, a lot of selective coins that I think that uh, you might want to add to your collection. So if you think uh, the information is good and valid, uh, by all means, uh, think about adding it. But uh, do your due diligence, okay? Again, uh, research the information I'm providing to you. And uh, you can, there's a lot of reference out there. There's always Google, there's always NGC, there's always PCGS, there's always Heritage. Okay, those are the resource that you want to get into. Uh, if you talk to a dealer, sometimes they don't have the knowledge base, okay, on these coins. A lot of dealers don't have it because they have to specialize in specifics like I do. I like to collect world coins. I know what is rare. I know what can be rare. I know what values of these coins will continue to go up. What, and of course, some are going to be stagnant. Some will be stagnant for years. Remember, sometimes if you look at the reference for world coins, those coins prices are not updated, okay? Sometimes they're not even updated for five, 10 years. You'll have to look at the market as a general to see where the prices are, okay? You look at Heritage, you look at eBay, you look at NGC, PCGS, look at the prices, where they're at. They're up and down all over the place. A lot of the printed publication, you'll not get that, okay? Because they're not up to date, though, and they have no time to update those reference information. So if you're relying on references and you come and tell me, oh, hey, you know, that same coin is referenced on Krauss uh, or whatever at $300, but if I can't buy it at $300, I'm paying six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800 for that coin, that reference is old, okay? Uh, I get a lot of emails saying, oh, you know, your prices are too high. I said, hey, look, if, if it's going to cost me more to buy the coin, right, it's going to cost me a little bit more to sell it because I'm here to do a business. It's not like I'm going to buy it for 700 and then sell it to you for 500 whatever the book says as the reference amount. It's not going to happen, okay? My business is not to make a loss, okay? And that's what I'm going to try to teach you. Okay, buy a coin at the right price. Be sure it's graded properly. Be sure you can sell it in the near future, okay? And I'm giving you the resource where you should sell it, okay? Uh, normally, if you go to your local dealer, coin dealer, uh, with your rare coins, they're not going to buy it at the price that you purchased it or at the price that you think it's worth. You'll have to send it out to one. You can sell it to... Uh, can sign it to a world coin dealer who specializes in coins and can price it accordingly. Two, you can auction it off like Heritage, Heritage Auction or a few other uh, auction companies that specialize in world coins that they have a large audience of world coin collectors, okay? So that is what needs to be done, okay? But uh, aside from that, let's look at the three coins I have for you. I got three nice coins that is uh, certified by NGC. Very popular coin, coins, highly desirable. Three different countries. I have Panama, I have Canada, and I have Dominican Republic. Okay, so these are very popular coins, highly desirable, always collectible. You can't go wrong. Uh, getting any of these three, okay? So let's take a look at uh, one of the coins. Um, and as I mentioned to you before, uh, buy, the whole, buy the coin, not the holder, okay? If you notice the date on this coin, right? It is. It says a Panama 1905. Again, 1905, they made it two years, 1904, 1905. The common one is 1904, very common. Uh, in this particular grade, uh, the 1904 is worth maybe a couple of hundred dollars in this nice grade. But 1905 is worth three or four times more, okay? But as I mentioned, buy the coin, not the holder, because if you look at the holder, what, did the, what does the holder say? It says 1904, Panama 50 cent. And this is a 1905, okay? So again, be sure to look at the coin and not the holder. 
because sometimes NGC makes mistakes. And look at this, this is a major mistake by NGC. And they give it an AU58, and this one here is most likely very uh, con conservatively graded. Uh, it's got all the high points, it's got full luster, nice cheek, nice eyebrow. The strike normally is soft on the feathers and normally soft on the eyebrow. That's the normal uh, way it's struck. But if you look at, you know, the breast, you look at the uh, beard, the lines, the shoulder, uh, you know, it is very nice. The luster, nice original. So it's a very close to a, an uncirculated coin. But again, look at the coin, not the holder, because the holder sometimes has some inaccurate information as this one, indicating it's a 1904, not a 1905, okay? This is the rarer date of the two coins. So, of course, uh, uh, I should send it back to NGC, get it relabeled accurately, but you know, this is a good teaching tool for me to you, that you be sure, look at the coin, look at the date, okay? And look at what the label says, okay? So, I mean, it's important that uh, you are, your eyes are trained to look at the coin. Overall, the grading of the coin, the luster, the strike, the high points of the coin, those are the things that you wanna look on this coin for. And that is what you know. I'm trying to emphasize to you, okay? And the reverse, very nice. Uh, shield, again, the luster, the strike, again. Normally, if you look at uh, uh, the bird with the wheel down the bottom there, the shield, normally it'd be so weakly struck. And you won't even see any detail, okay? Uh, but uh, this one here is a little bit better than most. Okay, sometimes sometimes the 1904 is so bad in strike. Same with the 1905. But when you get one that's a little bit more boldly struck as this one here, that's a plus. Okay, so this one here is a very nice struck up coin. Sometimes there'll be heavy bag marks, badly toned. Okay, avoid those coins, okay. Uh, there's still nice coins out there, still affordable in grade. So uh, wait your time, be patient till the right coin comes along. And this coin here, like I said, is a, it's a gorgeous coin and you can't beat the condition of the coin. I mean, uh, that is what the, you should get. The luster on it is nice, look around the edge. Uh, normally, if this is a circulated coin, you s will still see some luster on the edge of the coin between the lettering and the rim, since that is normally your fingers can't go between those surfaces. So you will see luster lingering in those areas, okay? And normally on the fields that are exposed, the luster will, will be gone because of the oil and the rubbing of your fingers on it, okay? So just keep that in mind. So this one here is just a gorgeous coin. This is a buy the coin, not the slab, because you can see that it says 1904, and you can see on the coin at six o'clock, it says 1905, okay? Again, be careful and look at the coin very well before you buy it, okay? Uh, this one here is also a nice coin. This is from Canada. I specialize in Canadian coins, gorgeous coins. This is a 47 Canada, pointed seven. Uh, QDO, HP, uh, quad, double struck, overse, okay? Quad, so struck four times. Uh, double struck on the overse. So the HP is uh, struck, and you'll see the HP uh, just below the neck there, okay? So just above uh, where it says uh, IMP, right? Uh, at uh, basically at five o'clock, just below the neck line, you'll see the symbol HP. And uh, you'll note that it's, they all, if you have to take a microscope, you'll see that it's uh, struck four times. Okay, so that's what it's indicating. Uh, 
See, do I have a pin here? I don't have a pin here that I can show it to you. But uh, if I have my magnifying glass, let me see if I can uh, point that out to you. I get a nice one in there. There you go. So you see the HP right in the center of the magnifying glass, right, is normally what you're gonna see there. We barely can see it. But man, I should clean this magnifying glass so I can do this pretty often, okay? But that's where you wanna see four strikes of the initial of the designer. Okay, so uh, then again, also the 47 pointed is a key date. Very small number of these coins were struck so this 47 is a key date compared to a 48. Between the 47.7 and the 48, both are almost equivalent in value, in my opinion. But uh, this 47 is still more affordable than the 48 because the 48 is more popular. And there is uh, two other varieties, actually three other varieties. Uh, the 47 pointed with a dot the 47 blunt, and the 47 with a maple leaf to the right of the seven, okay? But out of the three or four versions, the 47 pointed is the more rare coin because only a very few of them, as far as numbers, available. And a lot of these coins did see circulation. So if you look at this coin, this is a nice original coin. Hasn't been cleaned. It's... Graded MS60, so there are probably a few contacts on the fields, you know, maybe some on the face, but overall, you know, it's pretty clean in my opinion, okay? So I just wanna be sure that you can see this. And the high points of it is gonna be the hair detail, just right above the ears, the eyebrow, the jaw, you know, those are the, those are the important parts of this coin, okay? And let's look on the reverse. So you got the frontier, you got the canoe, and of course you got the 47. Uh, note on the 47, right? Boy, let me bring that magnifying glass again. You'll see it's got a little curved tail to it. A little curved tail to the coin. And that's what you wanna look for is that seven there. Whoops, do it this way. See if I can get a good shot of it. Yeah, well, let me see here. Well, having a difficult time trying to magnify this. But the seven there. Yeah, if you look at the seven, too bad there's shadows there. It makes it difficult. But uh, that is where you want to look. At the seven, you're going to have like a little curved tail. Okay, let me bring that up as best I can here. It's got a little curved tail at the bottom that swings to the right. Okay, so you're gonna look at that. There you go. Yeah, you can see that little long tail that sticks down, okay? That's a little hook. That is a pointed seven, okay? The blunt seven is pretty much cut in half. You don't see that hook on that seven. Okay, so be sure you know the difference between a pointed seven and a blunt seven, okay? Some people, sometimes NGC or PCGS is gonna misidentify the variety, okay? And uh, sometimes I'll call, I'll contact the dealer that says it's a pointed seven, which is the rarer of the two. And they will just say, ah, oh, well, it's labeled by NGC as a pointed seven, but it's, you know, really a blunt seven. And they they will not adjust the price again. At uh, this point at seven, you can see it a little bit better here. Trying to get you as best I can on that seven. There you go. It's better than my, the magnifying glass. But again, look at that curve curvature on that seven, okay? It's got that long tail. Okay, you just know that, like I said, be careful. Uh, NGC or PCGS has mislabeled some uh, pointed uh, blunt seven, as a pointed seven, okay? And I've noted it many times on eBay, okay? So be careful. So this one here is a nice coin. Uh, 
better than most, even though it is an MS60. It is a rare date. And of course, you can still pick up a nice AU around three to 500. A BU is gonna be around six, sometimes up to $2,000 on this particular type, okay? Again, I wanna emphasize that sometimes PCGS or NGC is mislabeling the variety as a pointed seven, even though the actual coin is a blunt seven. And at, they're asking price similar to a pointed seven, okay? So don't get uh, caught up where you bought a coin that is the wrong variety, okay? Because what NGC or PCGS has mislabeled. And next time, I will show you images of, of that, okay? I think that's a good learning lesson. So buy the coin, uh, not the slab, okay? So you will find out, and you don't wanna pay, you know, $500 more for a coin that's only worth $200, okay? Because a blunt seven is worth 200 and a pointed seven could be worth, you know, up to $1,000. So if it's mislabeled as a pointed seven, you paid $1,000 and realize it's a blunt seven, you just lost 800 bucks, okay? So, uh, you know, do your due diligence and be sure that you know the difference between a pointed seven and a blunt seven, okay? Again, here it is. If you want to see it, it's there. You got that nice little point curving to the right and sticks down below the four, okay? Again, sticks down below the four. I right, try to get you a little bit more better identification on that seven, okay? Okay, let's, as far as I'll go on that. But that's a nice coin. And hopefully uh, you just picked up some good information on the difference between a blunt seven and a pointed seven, okay? Now, uh, the next coin I have is uh, this guy here from Dominican Republic. This was, uh, these were struck in the U.S. Mint, okay? Philadelphia. Philadelphia Mint does strike coins for other countries, and Dominican Republic is one of them. Uh, the thing about this coin is the, the silver is a lesser amount. And once this coin wears down, it really looks ugly because uh, the base metal starts to show. Uh, since the silver is a lower in value, base metal is higher. Any wear, any heavy wear on the coin uh, kind of shows out the base metal, which is really ugly. So, uh, and normally it's going to, the first area of the base metal showing will be on the face. And that's the problem uh, I just don't like about this particular peso, okay? This applies also to the 1891 five Franco, okay? So this is the un peso, the, the first peso of the Dominican Republic that is highly collected by a lot of collectors, okay? Very popular. Now this is NGC graded AU55. In my opinion, this is a nice 58. Uh, highest point you wanna see is the cheeks. Yeah, of course, the ears, the hair, the band, the feathers are all intact. So this is a premium quality for an AU55. So they were very uh, conservatively graded grading on this particular coin. And of course, you know, if, you, if I can pick it up cheap at 55, is great because I know its condition is more than 55, okay? So this is a very nice high-end coin. Uh, uncirculated, true uncirculated, okay? Sometimes uncirculated uh, PCGS or NGC are basically sliders, okay? Because they don't know how to grade the coin, okay? Uh, that's my opinion, okay? I've seen many. Uh, so this one here is a nice coin. Uh, this some of this coin, this one here is probably a little better than some MS sixty fives that I see uh, by PCGS or NGC or anything in the MS sixty or better. So this one is a very nice coin. It took me a while to find this particular coin the way I like it. Okay, so this is a very nice coin. And then of course um, on the overs also the same very nice coin luster sharp detail uh, look at the the wreath look at the leaves look at the, the detail on the writing uh, uh, of 
porous, like I said, it says 25 grams, but silver is, like I said, the silver content on this one here is not, you know, it's not 900 fine, okay? Uh, this one here is, I think, I'm not quite sure, but it is less than that. That's why I see most sometimes base metal on this coin. And uh, so be careful that you don't see the base metal on this coin. Uh, you wanna see coins in this quality. You can look at the, on the shield, look at the horizontal line, vertical lines, look at the book, uh, look at the wear and the high points. Uh, this is pretty much all intact for an AU55. So to me, uh, very conservative in their grading on this one here. So just a gorgeous coin. So it's hard for me to uh, get rid of coins that definitely is as nice as this, okay? So if you want to collect the one peso 1897, look at my coin and look at the coin that you're trying to purchase, okay? And then uh, hopefully what you're gonna buy is better looking than this one here, especially if it's mid state, 60, 61, 62, okay? Just let use this as, you know, uh, your guide. That's the purpose of this video is for you to have a guide so you don't get ripped off by uh, coins that you're trying to buy, okay? So hopefully uh, you got, you know, three nice coins here that I would like to promote. <laughs> well, I like to promote because I like to buy them. Okay, if I buy them, okay, I'm going to sell them to you, but I'm going to buy them back, okay? And uh, these coins here definitely makes my business uh, cycle continue, 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 because these are the things that will continue to, to get into, uh, you know, important collections, okay? Okay, as a beginner, intermediate, or advanced collector, these are the coins that you wanna add uh, to your uh, portfolio, okay? Because sooner or later, your collection as a hobby becomes a portfolio of investments. Okay, because you are learning, advancing, and uh, your knowledge base is growing. And of course, as your knowledge base and your interest gets more, you know, your financing also grows with you too. As you get older, as you work harder, you make more money, you're gonna, you know, put more money into your investment. Because let your money do the work for you. And don't work for your money as much, but let the money, let these items work for you. So in the long run, you have a nice IRA uh, portfolio worth of rare coins, okay? Well, hopefully you liked the video and hopefully uh, the information helps you out. And hopefully you'll uh, think about what I've said and hopefully uh, you know, you're gonna buy some good quality coins, but do your due diligence, okay? Uh, told, take everything I say 100%, okay, always, you know, verify, 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 and then uh, think about what I said, and then use the videos to help you out, okay? Uh, hopefully, uh, you like the information, so please, if you have not subscribed, please help me grow my channel, help me grow my viewing numbers so I can get monetized, gives me more a chance to let my money work for me, and of course, these this videos are good for you. Okay, if you're, you know, whatever level of collector you are, hopefully it helps you out. So till next time, you know, subscribe, ring the bell, comment, definitely like my video to help me grow my channel. Till next time, have a great day.